Solar power has undeniably shone over the past decade, coming to the fore of the renewable energy market. Supplies have increased and so too has competition. Here in Thun, Switzerland, the global group Meyer Berger now employs over 500 people. It's the only company that makes the equipment capable of generating solar power from start to finish. And it also manufactures the equipment capable of allowing this process. Let's find out how this unique approach is serving Maya Berger. Mr. Pauli, thanks for being with us. Can you begin by explaining to us what the biggest challenge is that Maya Berger is currently facing in the market situation? Yeah, if you look back, uh, we had a difficult time in our industry, in the total in industry, and uh, currently it's a matter of getting new orders in and handling the orders through the supply chain by starting the supply chain new. Where does Meyer Berger see itself in the next 10 years and how do you expect the market to develop? Yeah, of course, we follow our strategy. We want to be a major player combining technology and uh, energy from the sun and change this energy mix of this world. What you see in the display case here, this is a monocrystalline ingot that produces a mono wafer in the end. You can see that it's round in shape. And this one has actually been what we call cropped. This is cut to size to prepare it for the wire saw. These ingots vary in length, about two to three meters in length. And so we have to cut them in size to prep them for the next part of the tool, which is gonna be squaring. So we're walking over here to what we call the Brickmaster. Okay. The Brickmaster is the tool that's gonna do the squaring for us. This round ingot that we have is gonna be loaded into this machine. Inside here, where you see each one of these square pieces, there's gonna be an ingot laid in that spot. What we have up here is gonna be a grid of diamond wire. This grid of diamond wire is going to basically make a square inside there. This is what we call the cutting yoke. The cutting yoke is going to come down and it's going to basically cut the pieces off. I have a model here I can kind of demonstrate what's going to happen. Yes, absolutely. This is the outside side of an ingot, the round part. The wire is going to come on all four sides and it's going to cut off the sides. So we go from round to square. So that's the rather impressively titled Brickmaster, which does squaring. What's the next step in the process? The next step is going to be a polishing step. We need to have a smooth surface for further steps down. What, we come, what we're coming to now is a grinding machine. What the grinding machine is going to do is it's going to actually polish the surface of the brick. Now that this is square, we call it a brick. If you look here, this is what it looks like after it comes out of the Brickmaster. It's fairly smooth, but not still a little bit rough. You're welcome to touch it. And then here, this is after polishing. You see it has a nice, beautiful finish. Oh. Exactly. And this is now prepped for the next stage, which is going to be called gluing. And we need it to be in this shape because this is actually the surface of the wafers, the outside surface of the wafers that we're going to get later on. So what happens is basically, we put some glue on what we call a workpiece holder. We put some glue on this beam, and this beam is actually what we call a sacrificial beam. We'll actually be cutting into this later. I see. And then we put the brick onto it. If we come over here, I've got a sample of everything glued together yeah. so that you can see what it looks like. So what we have here is the workpiece holder glued to the beam, glued to the brick. Now we're going to flip this 180 degrees and load it into the wire saw. If we come over here, I can show you the wire saw and what it looks like. Here we can see quite clearly the workpiece holder that we talked about, the beam, and here we have just a demonstration brick, so it's kind of a half-sized brick. Yeah. What we have here, the wire is what we call the wire web here. The wire web is made out of diamond wire, and it's going to do what's going to be cutting the brick. And this brick, believe it or not, is going to be pushed through this wire web, and at the end of this step we're going to have a wafer. So, Eric, our wafers have just been cut. Do we need to then refine them? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to start to deglue them. Um, they're on the sacrificial beam that we talked about earlier. The degluing process is basically soaking them inside some chemicals to deglue them. And from there, then they're all kind of stuck together. So we have to manually separate them. Once they're separated, we can bring them to this machine here. This machine is going to be cleaning the wafers. 
If we go through step by step, basically the wafers are rinsed off because they're going to be dirty from the cutting fluid that sure. we saw in yeah. the previous steps. After that, we're going to rinse them a couple times. We're going to do a, a slight acid etch on them just to, to clean off any imperfections that are inside there. We need to make sure they're 100% clean. Eric, now that we have our wafers and we're checking for the quality, I'm intrigued to know how you're going to use this black box to achieve that. This black box is basically a series of cameras and lasers, and the cameras and lasers are going to work together to take photos of the, each wafer and measure it. Here we don't do a batch system where we only take a sampling process. We actually measure each wafer individually to make sure the size and the quality of the wafer is good. And this is all done with this machine here, which is a wafer inspection tool also made by Meyer Berger. Unfortunately, it looks just like a giant black box, but some special things happen inside. <laughs> the end result is that the wafers are measured and they come out over here. Once the wafer comes to the sorter, they're put into these styrofoam boxes, which means they're ready for transport. So Eric, we've come to the end part now where we're looking at selling these wafers. What is it that makes Meyer Burger such a unique company in this industry? I think the interesting thing for me personally for Meyer Burger is its commitment to quality. You've seen that there's a lot of quality steps going forward and also the fact that they are able to offer everything in the value chain. So here today we saw module and we saw wafer and we also have the sell portion. So I think Meyer Burger is in a unique situation or unique position where they can offer everything and they have experience in everything. So we understand if there's a problem with the sell process to come back a step and look in the wafer process. Maybe it's something inside here. So I think that's what makes Meyer Burger unique amongst all the PV companies. I know one thing that's really interested me is the fact that you're even making your own machines in order to manufacture this. Absolutely. We have to make our own machines. If we can make our own machines, we can control what we're producing. The very first step in module production is the glass. What you see here is an automated system that's going to pick up the glass. And this glass is the glass that is the uh, surface, what we call the sunny side of the module. So this is the side that the sun is going to shine on. Now, if we take a step back, you can see this machine here. This machine is a glass washing machine. What it's going to do is it's going to wash the glass and prepare it for the next steps. We want to make sure that the glass has no dust, no oils from fingerprints. We want to make sure it's as clean as possible before we go to the next step. Like a dishwasher? Absolutely. It's very much like a dishwasher at home, except without the soap. And we have a couple brushes in there that are going to do a little scrubbing, make sure the night glass is nice and clean. So basically, it's very simple but effective. Absolutely. So tell me about this process that I can see in front of me. It sort of looks like a conveyor belt. It's definitely a conveyor belt. What happens is in our system here in Meyer Burger, we're fully automated, or I should say semi-automated, which is a little bit different than most factories. What we have is the glass coming from the glass washing machine that we just saw a moment ago, and the glass is going to come over here. What we have on these big rolls that you see up here, these, uh, this kind of semi-transparent material, this is uh, called ethylene vinyl acetate, or EVA. This is the material that's going to bond the module together, and it's basically like the piece of glue that's in a sheet form. This is an automated cutting machine. It's automatically going to cut the EVA to the size of the glass. It's going to be a little bit larger. You can see here it's a little bit larger than the glass. This is because it shrinks during the lamination process, which we'll talk about later. We're standing in front of a machine, the likes of which I expected to see when I came to Meyer Burger. It looks very complicated. I'm sure you can enlighten us a little bit about it. I hope so. I hope so. In my hands here, just to show you, um, we have a cell. A cell is what makes up, is the most important part of the module. This is actually what produces the energy when we talk about a module. Without the cell, we wouldn't have anything. On the cell, you can see we have a grid pattern. We have some small lines and we have some big lines. These are called bus bars. These bus bars, if you will, are the highways to pull out the energy and the, where the electron is, are going to come out of the cells. What this machine does is it takes these cells, which are loaded here, and it takes this ribbon here and it basically solders on the ribbon onto the bus bars like this so that we have a way to move the energy out of this cell into the next cell. So this is basically the connection from one place to the next. So what's the next step in the process now? The next step in the process is what's called layup. This process here involves the robot that we saw earlier picking up the cells. What you see here is the glass that we had earlier with the EVA and the glass is now sunny side down. And what happens now is the robot's gonna place it in line with each other. This placement is very critical. 
the human eye can notice big deflections in alignment. So what we see here is if the line of cells is not perfectly aligned or a little bit crooked, from a cosmetic standpoint, it doesn't look good and the customer doesn't like that. So if it wasn't completely straight, would it still work anyway? If the cells are misaligned a little bit, the panel will work fine. It's very similar to having a scratch on a Ferrari. You buy an expensive Ferrari, you want it to look perfect. Here you're gonna buy a nice, beautiful panel. We want it to look perfect as well when it's on your home. So the next step we're gonna to go to is gonna be called interconnection. This is where we're gonna connect the string of cells together that we've placed on top of the module. I see. What they're doing is we have several strings on top of each module. And what they're doing is they have to connect one string to another string. This way, when the energy is produced by the cell, it flows in a pattern. So here what they're doing is what we call interconnecting. They're taking a larger ribbon and they're connecting all the strings together. You can see here, making the soldering from the small string or the small ribbon to the large ribbon there. And so now this puts all these strings in uh, connection to each other so that we can get the energy of the entire panel combined. And now that we're seeing them being all connected together, what could something like this perhaps power? In this case, um, I would say it could power a small motor, um, a water pump. You know, if you're, if you're using one panel like this, you can definitely um, power a pump to pump water in, say, Africa or in uh, Saudi Arabia if you have a deep enough well. It could do something like this, but it wouldn't be enough to power a home. We would need more power than this. Well, that's quite impressive, actually, that we're seeing now in front of us one panel that if it was in somewhere with a lot of sunshine, could be used, as you say, for a water pump. Definitely, definitely. So now we're coming up on the laminator. The laminator is basically where all the magic happens. I see. Fortunately, you can't see much inside the machine. But basically what we have is we have our module that's not glued together yet. All the pieces are separate. And it's basically going to be heated up and compressed. So what's going to happen is we have a plate on the bottom that heats it up and a plate on the top that just keeps pressure on the top of it. And all these components are going to melt together. The two sheets of EVA are going to turn into liquid and they're going to all basically meld together like a grilled cheese sandwich, if you will. You got two pieces of bread, cheese, cheese, melted in, you got one thing together, one sandwich, if you will. And that's what happens inside this machine. The machine's quite long because we have a couple different stages, but uh, basically you have a heating stage and a cooling stage. So this, after the cooling stage then, is the final process when we receive our grilled cheese sandwich. If you will, it's ready to eat, ready to serve at this point. We have one final check that we need to do. And if we come over here, I can show you the flasher that's going to do that final check for us. Okay, so most of the process is over. It's time now for a little bit of quality control, as it were. Exactly right. If we come over here, we can actually see the final step, which is going to determine how much energy each panel is going to produce. So this is the test before you release the panel out onto the market. Yes, and it's an absolute must for every module that's released into the market, whether it's by us or anybody else. We do that with this machine here. It's called a flasher. This is also made by Meyer Burger as well. And what the flasher does is it mimics the sun. Inside the flasher, we have a strong xenon bulb that's going to mimic the UV uh, spectrum and also the power that the sun's going to provide at a certain specification. The panel will move here and the panel will be flashed as it's connected to measure how much voltage is created from the panel, how much energy is created by the panel. So basically it's a really, really, a box with a really bright light. Absolutely, that's basically what it is. And you certainly wouldn't want to go in there without your sunglasses on. And only if you want to sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. What kind of efforts is Meyer Berger doing to secure market leadership? Yeah, for us, uh, it's definitely the integrated view we have in our uh, portfolio. This means coming from wafer, going to sell and module and having applications in the end user market. So we have the, the know-how along the full, whole supply chain to get everything needed to go for an, um, how shall I say that, an, an material flow which is aligned and bring you the optimum. Climate change is now undoubtedly a permanent fixture on the world's agenda. 
but the success of solar power also lies in political will and the economy. For Maya Berger, its key lies in its innovation and, as we've seen, dominance of the supply chain, all of which have granted the company recent and significant wins. For ReadyB, Helena Humphrey, Switzerland.